Welcome to lecture 23, in which we'll look at uh, a f an application of flip-flops. And the uh, particular diagram that we want to consider is shown right here. Uh, we have three JK flip-flops. And notice that the J and K inputs for each of these in, uh, flip flops, uh, all all of those six, all six of those inputs, the three J's and the three K's, are all set to uh, and equal to one. Uh, they're equal to the constant value of one. They never change. So J and K are both one, and uh, <clears throat> we have the following connections. Uh, we we will call the output of the of the top JK flip-flop Q0, the output of the next one Q1, and the output of the bottom one Q2. And notice that the Q complement output of the top one is fed forward to the clock input of the second flip-flop. And similarly, the Q complement output of the second flip-flop is fed forward to the clock input of the third flip-flop. Into the clock input of the top flip-flop we have this signal coming in and uh, we've labeled certain points of this signal. Uh, these points we've labeled as A, B, C, D, E, and F <coughs> and uh, we are uh, we have here, let, let's look over here at this table. Now, this table is not complete. Our goal is to finish the table. But we have one entry in the table. We're told that at, at time A, here at this very first time that has been marked in this signal, at time A, uh, Q2, Q1, and Q0 are all equal to zero. And so our goal is to find out what Q2, Q1, and Q0 will be at each of these subsequent times, B, C, D, E, and F. And the final thing that we'll say um, is that in this first case, we will assume positive edge triggered, or I'll say positive edge triggering for all three flip-flops and after we've done that uh, then in uh, we'll we'll do another example where we will assume negative edge triggering for all three flip-flops and we'll see uh, what difference, if any, that would make. So again, let's work together on this first case, and then I'll let you um, uh, stop the video and try the second case on your own. Let's try to figure out what would happen. Okay, so if all three of these flip-flops have a uh, are positive edge triggered flip-flops, then when this first positive edge comes in here, that I'm talking about this positive edge right here that's just a, a, a little bit after A. When that first positive edge comes in, okay, that positive edge will go into the clock of the first flip-flop. Now, <clears throat> remember that J and K for that flip-flop are both equal to 1, and when J and K are both equal to 1, that's the toggle condition for a JK flip-flop. So Q0, which is originally equal to 0, in fact, let me go ahead and put 0 here for each one of these initially. That'll be the first uh, value for each one of those. We're, we're, and we know, how do we know that? Because we're told that right here. Each one of those is equal to 0 at time A. And so uh, since we have this positive edge that comes into the positive edge triggered flip-flop, and J and K are both equal to 1. That means we'll have the toggle. And so Q0 will go to 1. So uh, <clears throat> now, 
um, we can just as we uh, filled in zero for the initial value of each of the Q outputs we can also we know then that each of the complements will be one so we have one one and one here is the initial value of Q complement for each um, flip-flop and when that first positive edge comes in then Q naught will go from zero to one and the complement will go from one to zero now that one to zero that we've just filled in right here for the complement of Q naught that one to zero constitutes a negative edge and that negative edge will come in here to the clock of the second flip-flop but remember the second flip-flop is a positive edge triggered flip-flop so when a negative edge comes in what happens nothing so the zero will stay at zero and likewise one will stay at one and that one staying at one uh, will be fed forward to the clock of the final flip-flop and since the clock signal has not changed it has not undergone a positive edge then nothing will change with this output so zero will remain zero and one will remain one so we see that after that first edge this this first edge right here after a after that first edge comes in, Q0 will change from 0 to 1, but Q1 will remain equal to 0, and Q2 will remain equal to 0. And nothing else, none of that will change until we get to this next positive edge. Because remember, this signal here is only being fed into the clock of the top flip-flop, and that top flip-flop is a positive edge triggered flip-flop and therefore anything other than a positive edge will have no effect so since nothing will happen until we get to this second positive edge or since I should say nothing else will happen beyond what we've already identified nothing else will happen until we get to the second uh, positive edge then we can identify uh, that at time B Q2 will still be equal to 0 Q1 will still be equal to 0 and Q0 will be equal to 1 so now let's see what happens when this second positive edge comes in well, when the next positive edge comes in, again, J and K are still equal to 1, which is the toggle condition. And so this 1 will now change. It'll toggle to 0. And if that goes to 0, then the complement will go from 0 to 1. Now, that 0 to 1 is a positive edge going into the clock of the second flip-flop. And that is a positive edge triggered flip-flop. So this positive edge coming in there will make it ready to do something. And, and its J and K inputs are also equal to 1. So now it's ready to toggle. And it will go from 0 to 1. And the complement will go from 1 to 0. This 1 to 0 transition uh, for the complement of the second flip-flop is a negative edge and that negative edge coming into the final flip-flop which is a positive edge triggered flip-flop will have no effect and so Q2 will remain equal to 0 and Q2 complement will remain equal to 1 and then after that um, after those changes nothing else will change until this positive edge because once again uh, this signal is only going into the clock of this top flip-flop which is a positive edge triggered flip-flop so after this positive edge uh, nothing happens until we get to the next positive edge the one after after C so at time C Q2 will be 0 Q1 will be 1 and Q0 will be 0 
So we have 0, 1, 0 at the time marked C. And I encourage you to, I uh, hope that you already uh, have the hang of this, and so I encourage you to go ahead and stop the video at this point and try to fill out the rest of this table over here on the left for the positive edge triggered flip for, for the assumption that all the flip flops are positive edge triggered flip flops. So try to do that yourselves and then come back and we'll see if you were correct. So um, I hope you had luck with that, but if not, uh, here is the way we would solve it. So we're now on this third positive edge coming in. And um, once again, since the top flip flop is positive edge triggered, uh, that positive, and, and since J and K are equal to one for all the flip flops, we have a toggle. So zero goes to one, and the complement one goes to zero. That one going to zero there constitutes a negative edge, and the negative edge coming into this uh, positive edge triggered flip flop will do nothing. So one stays at one and zero stays at zero and zero staying at zero certainly is not going to do anything to this last flip-flop and so it won't change either and zero will stay at zero and one will stay at one and so um, uh, at time d we will have q2 equals zero q1 is one and Q0 is 1. 0, 1, 1. Now let's go to the this positive edge right after D. Okay, the, the positive edge coming into the positive edge triggered flip-flop here will cause this one to toggle. So 1 will go to 0, and the complement 0 will go to 1. This 0 going to 1 represents a positive edge coming into the second flip-flop and so it will also toggle one will go to zero and zero will go to one this zero going to one constitutes a positive edge coming into the third flip-flop and so now it will toggle zero will go to one and one will go to zero and so now after that positive edge, um, right after D, immediately after that, we will have Q2 is 1, Q1 is 0, Q0 is 0. 1, 0, 0. And let's do uh, this, this final positive edge that's shown up here, the one right after E. When that positive edge comes into the top flip-flop, uh, it will make it toggle, so 0 goes to 1, and the complement 1 goes to 0. 1 going to 0 there is a negative edge coming into a positive edge triggered flip-flop, and so it will have no effect. 0 stays at 0, 1 stays at 1, and 1 staying at 1 coming into the third flip-flop does nothing. So 1 here will stay at 1, and 0 will stay at 0. And now, <clears throat> if we look at Q2, Q1, and Q0, we have 1, 0, 1. And I'm sure that you can all uh, readily see that uh, the application here is what we call an up counter. This is counting up. Uh, you can see that here, uh, zero, these are, think of these as binary numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and, um, uh, if it, you can, you can follow this on if you wanted to, you could extend this signal, uh, the next one would be six, and then seven, and you should verify for yourselves that once it gets to seven, uh, then if we had another positive edge come in after that, then it would go back to zero, zero, zero. So this is an up counter, which has a, a maximum value of one, 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 which, uh, which is the binary representation of the decimal number seven. So I hope that uh, 
that was clear to everybody. And so now what we'll do is um, erase all this writing that we've put in as we went through the various time steps. Now again, <clears throat> we'll start at zero for each output because that's where we're told to start. We're, we're told that at A, now, now we're doing this work over here on the, um, on the, for the table on the right, and we're told that uh, at time A, it is zero, zero, zero. Of course, if you were told uh, different initial values, you would need to use those. But we're told it's zero, zero, zero at time A, and now we'll go through this just as we did with this one, except the uh, difference now is that this is a negative edge triggered. All three flip-flops are considered to be negative edge triggered. And so let's see if this makes any difference. Okay, well, um, uh, again, all the three outputs are zero at A, and now let's see what's the first thing that happens after time A. Well, now when this positive edge comes in that will have no effect because this is a negative edge triggered flip-flop so nothing's going to happen until we get this negative edge right here and when that negative edge comes in we have one for both j and k so this is going to toggle and zero here will go to one now the complement one will go to zero and one going to zero is a negative edge coming into this negative edge triggered flip-flop and therefore um, this will also toggle because uh, J and K are equal to are both equal to one for this flip-flop as well so zero will go to one and one will go to zero and this one going to zero is also a negative edge coming into the final flip-flop and again, J and K are equal to 1, so this one will toggle as well. And so we'll have 0 going to 1, and 1 going to 0. So, at um, and, and nothing else happens until um, we get to the next negative edge, and therefore we can conclude that at time B, Q2 is equal to 1, Q1 is equal to 1, and Q0 is equal to 1. So we have one, one, one. And now let's go to the first negative edge after time B. So now we're looking at this negative edge here. And when that negative edge comes in the uh, to the top flip-flop, it will toggle. So one will go to zero. And zero will go to one for the complement. Zero going to one here is a positive edge and this positive edge coming into a negative edge triggered flip-flop will do nothing so one will remain one here and zero will remain zero and zero remaining zero coming into the clock of the final flip-flop will do nothing so one will remain at one and zero will remain at zero and therefore at time C, our uh, outputs will be one, one, zero. And now let's look at the next negative edge after time C, which is this one. That negative edge comes in here to this clock, to this negative edge triggered flip-flop, which has one at both J and K, and therefore it will toggle and zero will go to one and the complement one will go to zero that one going to zero is a negative edge coming into a negative edge triggered flip-flop which has one at both the j and k inputs so it will toggle and one will go to zero 
and zero will go to one. This zero going to one is a positive edge coming into a negative edge triggered flip-flop so nothing will happen with the final flip-flop. One will remain one. Let's see, one. One will remain one and zero will remain zero for the complement. And therefore, at time D, our output is one, zero, one. One, zero, one. And now let's look at the next negative edge after that. The top one will toggle once again. One goes to zero. And zero goes to one. Zero going to one is a positive edge. A positive edge coming here to a negative edge triggered flip-flop does nothing. So zero remains zero and one remains one. One remaining one comes into the final flip-flop and that doesn't do anything. So here as well, one remains one and zero remains zero. And so now... Uh, at point E, our outputs are one, zero, zero. And finally, uh, we have one more negative edge after E, and let's see what happens then. Okay, the negative edge comes in here, and the top flip flop will toggle. Zero goes to one, one goes to zero. That one going to zero is a negative edge coming into this negative edge triggered flip-flop. So, uh, and J and K are both equal to one, so it will toggle. Zero will go to one. One will go to zero. That one going to zero there uh, is coming into the third flip-flop, which is that one going to zero is a negative edge, and this is a negative edge triggered flip-flop. And it has J and K as its input, so this will toggle. And one will go to zero, and zero will go to one. And so at time F, our outputs will be zero, one, and one. Zero, one, one. And now that we look at this, I'm sure you can see what this is. This is a down counter. It is counting in reverse order. Uh, we start at zero and go to seven, and that's because this is seven is the largest number uh, that we can uh, display, and zero is the smallest number that we can display with these three digits. But then after that, you see seven, six, five, four, three, and so on. So. Uh, here we see uh, an application, or maybe you consider it even two applications, an up counter and a down counter, and these can be realized using JK flip-flops. And depending on uh, whether we have positive edge triggered flip-flops or negative edge triggered flip-flops, uh, this can be that will determine whether we get the up counter or the uh, down counter. Um, with this particular wiring. Now you might ask yourself, well, what would happen with a different wiring scheme? And we uh, will see that in the uh, test. So now let's look at the test questions for this lecture. Uh, all of the test problems will refer to uh, the diagram shown here, where once again we have three uh, JK flip-flops and you see their outputs Q0, Q1, and Q2 just as before and uh, we'll go ahead and assume that at the time labeled A Q0 is equal to 0, Q1 is equal to 0, and Q2 is equal to 0. Notice that the uh, connections between the flip-flops uh, are a little different from before. Instead of feeding forward the complement of the output in each case, 
we're feeding forward the output itself. So in other words, Q0 is fed forward to the clock of this uh, middle flip-flop and Q1 is fed forward to the clock of the bottom flip-flop. So the question is, if uh, we have these connections uh, and we have the initial values Q2, Q1, and Q0 are all equal to zero, and this is the signal coming into the clock of this top flip-flop. That, that's the situation, and one is uh, J and K are constant equal to one for all of the flip-flops. Then the questions that we have are these. On 23.1, it says, if all three flip-flops are positive edge triggered, what is the Q2, Q1, Q0 sequence at the time labeled E and 23.2 says if all three flip-flops are negative edge triggered what is the Q2, Q1, Q0 sequence at the time labeled E and uh, then 23.3 will be given in class and I see now that I haven't given you uh, the choices uh, so let's make it as follows So let's assume that for uh, both problems, uh, the sequence in A is 110, the sequence in B is 101, the sequence in C is 100, and the sequence in D is 011. And remember, we're talking about the sequence Q2, Q1, Q0. So the first number, like for instance in D, we're saying Q2 is 0, Q1 is 1, and Q0 is 1. So you need to pig figure out uh, in each case what the output sequence would be at the time labeled E uh, and it needs to be one of the four choices given and uh, again in 23.1 the assumption is all, JK flip all the JK flip-flops are positive edge triggered and 23.2 it is all of them it is that all of them are negative edge triggered and then 23.3 will be given in class. So that concludes this lecture, and good luck.